Hey everybody, how you doing? <clears throat> We're gonna talk about a few things that should be on the front plate for us all. First of all, all the freaking out that was put out there on some YouTuber videos about the food stamp cards not working. Well, supposedly, uh, it was an error. They were doing some type of system maintenance. And you can read the old article. You can find them. They're posted now. Xerox has announced that access has been restored for users in the 17 states affected by the outage. Restarting it and rebooting it takes a little time though. So not everybody may be hitting back online and able to use it at the same exact time. But you had some EBT systems with connectivity issues after a test of a backup system. Could this be a dry run for later on whenever they shut down things or cyber attack shuts down things? Maybe. But maybe not. Anyway, what has happened has happened. And what is happening now is what is happening now, and that the ability to use these cards for the benefits is being restored. It reached uh, all the way down into Oklahoma, however, up in Oklahoma here. So I'll scroll down. We've got. Uh, SNAP benefits and then we have a separate system for the state benefits like unemployment so as far as I can tell from what I've searched and been able to read these benefits are coming back to the people and there is no chaos in the streets you know it would be a little embarrassing, a little a very maddening though if you went to get your groceries and you were going to pay with the benefits card and then they said you couldn't have what you had in your cart. You know, hopefully those people had a little bit of something that they could have went home to and ate or possibly maybe some friends or relatives that maybe gave them something to eat while they were waiting for all this stuff to get back up and run. But that is what happened. <clears throat> that is what they say. I'm not seeing any more postings of everybody still saying that everything is still down and not able to be used. Now the Fukushima radiation he had a little deal here a few days ago where a pump used to cool, I believe it was number one, the number one unit, which is one of the three that were damaged in the uh, earthquake and tsunami occurred in Japan. They give two reasons, <clears throat> and one reason was It could have possibly been a faulty electric switchboard or a worker might have accidentally shut down the main pump by hitting the stop button during a routine check. Either way, this problem's not going away. It hasn't gone away since the earthquake and tsunami. It goes out to all people of the world as I hope that they're hearing and this is being shared. Radiation is an equal opportunity killer. It does not discriminate against your race or your gender or your age or where you live or what you eat or the air in your vicinity that you breathe. It contaminates all life. 
and it is as I speak make this all that water for two over two years now has been pumped onto those reactor cores to keep them cool and then that contaminated water is supposedly been being stored yeah it's being stored all right you know and some of it is you know the giant tanks you know they got a whole bunch of them but they got a whole lot that just dump into the ocean And, you know, everybody needs to understand, especially the people in that immediate area over there, it's not going to dilute just because there's more ocean water than there is contaminated radioactive water. It's not, it's not going to be like a glass of tea that you keep adding water to and it just dilutes it down and makes it weaker. No, that's not going to happen. It's going to get into that ocean current, and it will. And this is just the water part. That water will make its way to the west coast of the U.S. It will. And give it enough time, that water will eventually circulate everywhere. If you give it enough time. Probably, I don't know the exact time, but I, I know sometime 2014 it'll be coming to your western coast. And that, those fish are going to be contaminated with it. There's no doubt. I don't care what anybody wants to argue with me about. You're, you're absolutely out of your mind wrong if you don't think they are not going to be carrying radi radiation <coughs> and eating them eating radiated fish well you know what that should mean like I said before you're not going to keel over right after you eat it it's going to get into people's systems and it's going to sit there until it starts affecting some certain part of your internal organs. And then you're going to experience problems. Maybe you're going to build a tumor. But it's not just going to disappear out of your system. Once it's in, it's in. Once you're contaminated, you're contaminated. TEPCO and the government, well, they're both they're both in in bed together. There's there's no reason why the the entire world should be all trying to put this puppy to bed over there for the good of the world. But you don't see that happening because they don't want it to happen. It's a bad thing to say, but that's just the way it is. They don't want it to stop. We've already been there and done that. This is about your interaction of Mars and Comet Ison. It is an electric universe, <clears throat> and Ison did interact with Mars when it went by, and that that's what I was talking about whenever I talked about Ison. But we don't have to worry about getting hit by Ison because it's not really that big. It's going to be quite a ways away but what we keep our eyes on is the interaction between ice and the Sun which would then cause the Sun to react and if it did it would be in the way of a CME probably and hopefully we wouldn't have it pointed directly at us. And the debris, I still say it's going to be far enough away 
that we're not going to get large chunks of rock falling down and doing anything yet. Remember, we're still in God's time, not man time. <laughs> and it's not time. <clears throat> There's too many biblical things that have not unfolded yet for us to start getting pounded by rocks all over the place. Okay, so don't, you know, when November comes and this thing happens, it's, it's going to be an event. And if we did lose power, it would more than likely be because of an interaction with the sun that resulted in the sun seeing me in us and causing a power failure. We'll just have to, you know, we'll just have to keep an eye on this drill that they're going to have in November. But I still keep uh, finding no real evidence that they're going to shut down our grid. I'm, I'm not reading anything like that. I'm not finding anything that's concrete to really make me uh, believe anything like that. Because they're, str they're strength in numbers, you know, even if we got three or four hundred thousand foreign troops practicing urban warfare and, and stuff like that, you know, that's three or four hundred thousand and they would be very well equipped. Uh, they would probably be coupled with some of our own uh, military forces. But, <laughs> that's why they want your guns, because they know they're outgunned. You know, we may not have exactly every heavy piece of equipment that they've got, but us Americans are very well armed. And if we need to, you know, we, we know what to do if somebody is threatening us in a harmful manner. We have to defend ourselves. But this, this little article here was Professor James McCanny, and he goes on to talk about how uh, it's, you know, ice and turn green, and that Mars has a coma because of the interaction when ice and went by. So we know that there was some kind of an interaction between the planet and the object. So, we'll just see if there's an interaction between the object and the sun. All we can do is pray. You pray for the sick and the dying and the poor, the lonely, the scared, the oppressed, the lost, the non-believers, the people that believe in the wrong thing, that if they do believe anything. You know, what do you, what do you gain, like it's, you know, what do you gain if you lose your soul? I mean, it's like going to the casino and blowing your bankroll and walking out empty. It's a losing proposition. You're just hoping that you get lucky. Well, don't gamble with your soul. You may not believe in God, but He believes in you until the very last breath that you draw. And that's the time He gives you to find him and get close to him. So do it. What are you afraid of? Are you too intellectually big headed that you think you've got all the answers that logic dictates? You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't touch it. You gotta feel it. It's faith. So get some faith, baby. Say some prayers for everyone. Because change is coming down the line. God bless y'all.